Did I eat that already? Man, I'm still hungry. Okay, this is uh, Morganite. Very, very, very nice color. Morganite, deep color. I have a customer that wants a cushion cut with a checkerboard top. I think this will fit just perfectly. And it's a beautiful stone, so let's see how much it weighs. So this stone weighs in at uh, 7.66 carats, but I need to cut a specific diagram with this stone, and I need to cut to an exacting size of seven by seven millimeters. So I'm not cutting uh, this gemstone to maximize yield. I need a cushion cut, which this rough is well suited for, and I need a checkerboard design on the top. And since I'm not cutting to maximize yield, again, it's just a special order, I expect that I'll probably get around a 20% return on the original 7 plus carats, or about 1.2, 1.3-ish carats for the final gemstone. And that's a reasonable weight return uh, when you're cutting to a specified size and design. And again, this Morganite is of exceptional vivid pink color. And I rarely come across Morganite rough of this shade of pink. I have previously shown a comparison of the many shades of Morganite that I have, um, and they're all go from very good on up to exceptional to very rare. And I'll replay uh, parts of that clip here so you can see the different types of Morganite. And when I show you, notice the group of three uh, top quality Morganites in this next segment. The Morganite that I'm cut today is about the same color a little bit better, I'd say, than the best color Morganite in that group of three. It's not quite as good as the one Morganite that I that I did find, which I'm hoping to find again, but haven't yet. Okay, so this is pink Morganite, which is a barrel. We're going to be, see what we can look at, look, see if we can look at a couple of these pieces and evaluate the quality of this rough. So these two pieces are here are from Africa. They're, this is a what the trade calls a medium to dark uh, pink pink morganite. It's not really dark. Morganite is generally light pink or peach. We're only going to be looking at the peach ones right now. This one, this lot up here, these three pieces, also from Africa, described as pure pink. So, when you buy Morganite, this is the color you're, you're going to get. So, when you evaluate rough, what you want to do is you want to look at the color. You want to look at the size, the shape, how clean it is inside. Um, check the clarity and uh, then make, make your decision. Uh, this piece of rough, for example, look kind of on the inside so it's going to be a problem uh, you, you, you're going to lose a lot of rough because you can't cut you can't cut it this big because it's too thin this one's got a very nice shade of pink as does this one so in general this is lighter than this and I'm not sure you can see that in the camera or not and this is fairly expensive rough, uh, This is, but this is even more expensive, about three times. Now, I did find a piece of rough that's very rare, Morganite, and, and I got one piece. Uh, my a friend of mine from the Congo sells rough, and he had a small lot of very pink rough. And I was picking through it, and he didn't want to sell it because he wanted to sell it by the lot. And finally relented and let me have one piece and one piece only and I've never seen it this pink so here it is this is what I have one piece of pink morganite now these are very top quality morganite that, that you're going to find um, available this is clearly much more saturated, much more vivid of a pink. Even even beats that one. So, 
And I got a pretty good price because I was buying it from the person that the gemstone dealer, the rough dealer, buy it from. So uh, this is fairly expensive. This is probably three times. This is three times the expensive of this. And this was probably... Uh, eight times as expensive as this one so but it's going to cut a beautiful stone now I also found a nice piece when I was at gem gem hunting uh, gem hunting at shows not gem hunting uh, in the mines uh, this is morganite this was a piece of rough that uh, one person was selling And it's gigantic. Um, it's lighter than these, so it's not as good of a pink, uh, even as this one. Again, this is top top quality, but this is pink morganite. So even within within the gemstone that you're looking for, like morganite, there's very different grades of pink. This is more pink than this. This is more pink than this, and this one is a very rare stone you're probably not going to find certainly not at any uh, jewelry store in the mall or, or where they where they have to find stones for 60 different stores in their chain and you're never going to find 60 of these good luck our clients uh, at my wife's jewelry store they generally know exactly what they want and in this case, very exacting. I need to cut seven by seven cushion cut. It has to fit into uh, an existing ring as the centerpiece. Uh, it has to be excellent quality morganite. They want a checkerboard design on the top of the stone or the crown. Unfortunately, I found a great design which meets the exacting standards of our client. And it's called the Diamond Checker Cushion. And the design was created by a very well-known gem diagram creator named Robert Strickland, who I have met and had the ple pleasure of meeting and getting to know um, in Tucson previously. And yes, uh, Robert is the same person who created one of, if not the first, computer-aided design or CAD program uh, for faceted gemstones called GemCAD. And he continued uh, to update that software starting in the very old days as an MS-DOS program, which some of you may know something about, ages ago, um, through, uh, he continued upgrading it through at least through, oh gosh, Windows, what was it, Windows 95. Um, we may have gone and, and updated it, kept it current through even beyond then, but recently uh, he released the GemCAD software into the public domain where you can download it and use it for free. Very nice of Robert to do that, but but it's no longer being supported or updated. And uh, many cutters, many cutters still use this program, uh, but GCS, Gem Cut Studio, is now the most popular gem design software being used today, and it's, and it's being updated. And a lot of cutters use both. They'll use Gem Cut Studio for most things, but there's still a few features of the Gem, gem CAD software that they do use. So I, just to let you know, that is out there and it is free if you want to look at something, GemCat. And I'll be using this design to cut our Morganite. Now for me, I always, almost always, use uh, GemCut Studio to kind of virtually test cut a design so I can see how it cuts and the various steps to go through in cutting it. And to do this, uh, it's the Gem Cutting Assistant feature in GCS. And I, I generally cut one facet on GCS, and then I'll cut that entire row or tier, and then I'll cut one facet on the next row, and then I'll cut the entire next row, just to see how things go step by step um, through cutting it. And I find this uh, virtual test cutting uh, helps me out quite a bit as I begin cutting the actual gemstone. Another feature of GCS, which I routinely use to examine a design before I start cutting, is called the tilt performance feature. And here, what I mainly look at is the brightness, uh, which GCS is estimating for the finished stone, and the windowing, where light passes through the stone and is not reflected back. 
Brightness is good, windowing is bad. I don't worry too much about the head shadow because that can be good or it can be bad. It all depends and it, it's not a feature I worry too much about. I'm, again, it's brightness and window that I'm looking at. And I normally just look at the uh, face up or zero degree tilt. And that's simulating if you were outside in the sunlight looking directly down at the top of the gemstone. In this case, GCS is predicting about 80% brightness, which is very good. And about a 5% window, which again is very good. Uh, so I'm happy with this, this design, but I kind of knew it would have a high brightness and low window because everything Robert created, uh, all the designs he created are generally very, very well done and have a high brightness and a low windowing. Sometimes, but not always, I will use the render feature in GCS. It just helps me visualize how the final gemstone would look. Not so useful to me, but, but it is useful if you're discussing a design with a client it does help the clients to visualize um, how that piece of rough is going to look when you finally cut it in the final gemstone. So that's another simulation that I do look at with GCS, but that's enough simulating. Let's start cutting. For our morganite, um, since we're cutting a cushion cut or a square type gemstone, we want to orient our stone, put it into our quill with uh, the four sides, one side aligned with the, uh, the 96 tooth. So you know, we kind of want it like that. And that'll align, of course, uh, one side with the uh, the 24 tooth and the 48 tooth on the bottom and the 72 tooth over on this side. So it doesn't have to be perfect. The stone's not perfectly square yet, but that's close enough. So then we set the uh, top retention screw, the little brass screw in the, uh, in the quill, and we're ready to start cutting our morganite. Okay, I've started polishing the uh, the outer row of facets here with uh, I'm using a tin lap and I'm using zirconium oxide. Now, I found that uh, beryl, morganite, aquamarine, emerald, goshenite, they all all polish pretty easily with a lot of different things. Cerium oxide polishes them right up. Quartz sixty thousand uh, grit, fifty thousand grit diamond also polishes them up. But uh, zirconium oxide, which I get in a bat stick from uh, Gerdus, also polishes it right up. I just wanted to uh, try that out again. So there's many things that polish barrel, very easy to polish. So uh, this, these outer facets, uh, there's four facets on each side. The outer two I've polished. The next two you can see uh, what the uh, pre-polished looks like. You can see Tiny, a little bit of brush strokes that need to be cleaned out, but it's polishing right up. So I'll continue uh, polish the next row of facets, and I've already already polished the girdle. So then I'll transfer the stone and uh, cut the upper half of our very nice colored uh, morganite. Okay, I finished polishing the bottom half or, or the pavilion of our morganite. So now I'll transfer the stone and uh, cut and polish the upper half. So I've gone over the uh, Morganite with my uh, a brand new uh, 600 grit uh, topper. Uh, my old 600 grit topper was uh, getting well worn, which which means it's much smoother. Um, so the new one's a little bit rougher, but it, it took pretty good care and pretty quick uh, quick work of the uh, first row of facets. Now I'm going to go to my 12 m which is about a 1500 grit. It's a centered lap and uh, probably 3,000 grit diamond on a bat lap after that, and then go to polish. This uh, barrel cuts quick and easy, so it's not, not proven to be much of, a, of an issue. I've pre-polished our morganite with a 3,000 grit diamond on a bat lap, and again, uh, there's no table on this, 
this gemstone with this design because it's a checkerboard top design so no table the customer wanted a checkerboard design so um, now I'm ready to polish and I'll, I'll again use a, a zirconium oxide uh, a bat stick from Gearless and a tin lap and uh, let's polish this up and uh, see what it looks like okay I've polished up our morganite again with zirconium, zirconium oxide uh, this time and tin lap so again it's got a diamond checkerboard top so kind of unique it's what the customer wanted so that's what they got so I'm going to go ahead and uh, take the stone out of the dop soak it in acetone to remove the uh, UV activated super glue and uh, weigh it measure it and send it off to Bopi she's waiting on it today I custom cut very vivid pink piece of morganite rough for a client who wanted a cushion cut with a checkerboard design and which had to be cut exactly to fit into an existing ring as a centerpiece stone and this this morganite's hard to find but every so often i stumble across a couple of pieces and i do pick it up uh, when i find it uh, morganite cuts an exep exceptionally beautiful gemstone in this case was no exception and morganite cuts and polishes easily and and i have a number of laps and and oxides that can do the polishing job today i use zirconium oxide in a tin lap but i have used cerium oxide which also works great i have used diamond 50k 60k diamond also works great to me all barrels polish uh, very easily and i think you'll find that to be the case now bopi tells me this gemstone was a perfect fit for the client's ring and the ring looks beautiful uh, but it's not quite done um, it's now with our jeweler being the stones being mounted into the ring so i can't show you the finished ring right now but i'm going to make a video at, by the end of the year showcasing many hopefully all of the beautiful pieces of jewelry which bopi has created or we've used our gemstones uh, that have been, been cut by me in so stay tuned for that video this design is not difficult to cut. Robert is an excellent creator of gem cutting designs. I would recommend you give this design a try. Uh, if you do, let me know uh, on my Facebook page how it turns out for you. And send photos. I always enjoy seeing how, how you guys do. And uh, tell me what you think of uh, Robert's design. And as always, happy fasting, everyone.